Bonjour, y'all. Uh, so I wanted to take a couple minutes today and talk about something that's been on my mind. Uh, you know, with all the craziness and uncertainty going on out there in the world, uh, we can look at that and we can start to see nonstop fear. We start to see panic, chaos, uncertainty, and it creates fear in us, right? And there's a few different ways we can respond to that. Not all of them good. Uh, the first thing that we can do is typically respond in fear. We respond to the fear, the uncertainty and the panic that we see with more fear. And it perpetuates. It's this cycle that just continues. We start to see it and we start to withdraw because we're afraid. We start to become afraid that uh, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. You know, We start to come up with all sorts of new things that could happen in the world. And we start to get really scared when we see all these things and we withdraw. We start to become so focused with self-preservation and self-concern and self-care that we forget about the rest of the world out there. We start to do things like hoard all sorts of supplies. And I'm not even just talking about the toilet paper shortages in the world. Like we just, we start to just pull everything into us and I need, I need to take care of me. And there is a certain amount of responsibility that we have to make sure that we have the things we need, but not when it's at the expense of others. See, especially in times like this, in times of, uh, of uncertainty and fear and, and panic and chaos, those who are without are even more, more vulnerable than they were before because they, don't, they, they might want to withdraw, but they don't have the means to do that. You know, I have to think specifically of some of the homeless people here in Knoxville uh, and, and some of those who are, might, may be homeless but don't have the means to go out and stockpile things. Right? There's, there's not going to be any shortage of things, but still, we start to do that and it, by default, it pushes others away. And it takes from those who don't and aren't able to take care of themselves with even the limited resources that are out there. And that's not a good response. But there are some great things we can do, which is, which is find ways to show love and hope and encouragement and support to others. We can choose to, to reach out to those who are in need. And I, I get it, there's this need for, for health concerns, so there's certain things we can or maybe shouldn't do, but there are still ways we can minister and love those who are in need in these times. When we start to look out and see, again, all the panic and, and uncertainty and chaos in the world, it becomes big and our eyes become fixed on it. Which is why I think one of the best things that we can do is pray. See, uh, in Genesis uh, 16, 13, there's this crazy story about uh, Hagar uh, and God coming to Hagar and she responds to God's commands and the things that God says to her. And she says, so uh, she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are the God of seeing. For she said, truly I have seen him who looks after me. And I think that's beautiful. Hagar saw everything that was going on in her world and she chose to see God because she understood that he sees her, right? So it's this beautiful thing. Like when we have these fears, when we have these times of chaos and uncertainty and panic, we can choose to look at God. We can choose to see the one who sees us. And that's what I want to encourage us to do. That's what I want to encourage people to do. Uh, and specifically, I want to encourage you to go after God in a hard way. And what I mean by that is uh, there's all these challenges, right? If you're connected to social media in any form or fashion, or even watch the news, they talk about some of the different challenges that are out there. Like the, you know, years ago it was the water bottle challenge. And then the, uh, I don't even know, there's this head clunking challenge. It's all craziness, right? But there are, you, you understand the concept of challenges on social media. And that's what I want to do. I want to challenge you to pray. I want to challenge you to pray for an hour. Now, I know if you've never prayed for an hour, that's going to sound insane. You're probably thinking, uh, Mike, uh, appreciate the overzealous effort you have here, but there's no way I can pray for an hour. If you know me, I like to challenge myself in hard ways. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a thousand push-ups, right? And that was a challenge because I wanted to push myself. But prayer is the best possible way we can challenge ourselves because it forces us to take our eyes off what we see and put them back on the God who sees. It forces us to look at the one who looks at us. And is there anything better to do in times of fear and panic and uncertainty all around us than to look at God? Now, if you've never prayed for an hour, this is going to sound like a monumental task and you're probably not sure how to do it. I wasn't either before I started doing this. Now, I don't do this every day. I think you probably could. And that's something I'd like to work up to, but I'm not quite there yet. 
But so at least once a week, I'm taking this challenge to pray for an hour. Now, there's a lot of great tools out there, right? There's a lot of great things you can use out there to help you pray for an hour. But there's one specifically I want to talk to you about. It's called the prayer wheel or the prayer cycle. Now, I'm going to put it up here uh, on an image for you real quick so you can take a look at it. And feel free to pause so you can take a good look at this prayer wheel. There's 12 different things, and it's five minutes of praying on each thing. So go ahead and take a look. Okay, so that's the, the prayer cycle. It's 12 things that you're going to pray through for five minutes each. Now, five minutes isn't a long time. We do five minutes of all sorts of things, right? And you could do, spend a lot of time in an hour doing things. I mean, a lot of people are stuck home at work right now. You could be binging Netflix for an hour, or you could take a break from that and put pause on the TV and spend time in prayer. Right, and it's really easy to set a timer, right? Like I've got a Fitbit, I can set a timer on that. I've got my phone, I can put a timer on that. I can be like, hey Google, set a five minute timer. Uh, there's all sorts of things you can do. If you get an Alexa, you could do. Right, five minutes, and we're starting now. See how easy that is? He already started it. Hey Google, stop the timer. It's really simple. Like that's all you gotta do in modern day world is just even say it and you've got a timer. Right, so I wanna challenge you to pray for an hour. Take your eyes off the things you're seeing in the world and put them back on the God who sees you. Look at the one who looks at you. I just finished that this morning and I gotta tell you, my whole day shifted. Everything I was thinking this morning when I woke up has now been rearranged and refocused because I'm seeing clearly. So I'm gonna go through these five things with you, right? Uh, so again, you've seen the image. Um, I'll put a link to it somewhere so you can pull it up at any point. First thing is praise, right? And that's just taking five minutes to praise God. Praise him for what he's done, uh, the things that you know about him. Just five minutes to just praise God. The second thing is, is waiting. And this is really, this is easy for some and it's hard for others. I'm a mover, I'm a shaker. I haven't probably stopped moving my arms or my body since this video started, but it's just waiting and saying, God, I'm here. I wait before you. Uh, the next is confession. And now don't get me wrong, confession is not just confessing sins. You might need to confess some sins and then go ahead and do that. Confession is also just making statements about what you believe. Right? Paul says in Romans that we confess Jesus as Lord. There are all sorts of things you can confess. You confess that you trust in who God is. You confess your face. You, you confess that he is God. Just take five minutes and just confess. Uh, the second one is read the word. And this is just pick up your Bible. I don't recommend you using your phone, right? I mean, if you have to, sure, go for it, right? But put it in airplane mode or something if possible. But just read the word for five minutes. Uh, the reason I don't recommend your phone is because you can get all sorts of notifications and distractions. And it's just, that's, 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 that's hard. <laughs> uh, the second thing is just petition. This is just you coming before God and putting it all before him and saying, God, I need you to move in this area of my life. I need you to move in this area of my life. You can be praying for multiple things at the same time because God doesn't get bogged down by our prayer. I was thinking this morning, you know, God, I feel selfish. I feel kind of selfish praying for things like fundraising and support raising for our mission trip. Um, and then he reminded me that he doesn't get bogged down with prayer. He doesn't run out of bandwidth when it comes to prayer. Right? We can pray for him, pray to him on multiple things at the same time because it's not like he's like, you've reached your daily limit, calm down. Or I'm dealing with this uh, coronavirus stuff, I don't have time for this right now. No, 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 no. He is the God who sees. He is the God Almighty, the omniscient one, the all-powerful one. He can do all things. So bring it all before him. Uh, second is inter uh, the next is intercession, and this is bringing others before him. I keep a list on my phone, like when I talk to people, or I meet somebody new, or somebody says they need prayer about something, I keep a list, right? And I just go through this list in my phone, and that's my prayer list for others. And then anything else God would have me pray for. Uh, I was praying for Conor McGregor today, because I got a video game, and it's got his uh, face on it. So I was like, Lord, draw yourself close to him. Praying for Muslims around the world, praying for all sorts of things. You're going to run out of time before you run out of things to intercede on. Uh, next is pray the word. And here, I would highly recommend choosing Psalms because these, this is the prayer book of the Bible, right? So uh, just as an example, uh, Psalms 31 uh, verses 3, 4, and 5 says, For you are my rock and my fortress. 
And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. For you take me out of the net they have hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit, and you have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. That's an awesome prayer. You didn't even have to think it up. God put it in here for you, right? So I would highly recommend the Psalms, uh, Psalm 23, Psalm 1, Psalm 8, uh, again, Psalm 31, uh, or just open up and pick a Psalm, like Russian roulette style. Just open up the Psalms and start reading and praying the prayer that is there. Uh, Next is Thanksgiving. And this is just you being thankful to God for what he's done who he is. And I'd also add what he's going to do. I mean, if we're coming to God in faith and in prayer, then we believe he's hearing us and we believe he's going to act. And I would just say, be thankful for what God has done. Be thankful for who God is and be thankful for what he's going to do in the future. Uh, Next is singing. And I use music here, right? Like I listen to worship and I try to sing along because I'm not musically inclined, but just sing your heart out to God. Uh, next is meditate, and this just means think about, right? Like we think meditate, and we think a lot of new age things, but this is just think about the things you've been praying. Think about think uh, of who God is. Think about things that are worthy of being th- thought about. Paul talks, uh, I think it's in Philippians, and he says meditate on the things that are worth thinking, basically, right? That's a that's a might paraphrase. Like whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is righteous, whatever is good. Think about these things. God commanded uh, Joshua in, in the book of Joshua to meditate on these things. He commanded the Israelites to think about these things day and night. Just think about the good things of God and who he is. Um, next is listen. And this is just you sitting back and saying, God, if you want to speak, I'm here. If you want to say something, I'm listening. Maybe God chooses to speak and maybe he doesn't. But how will you know? If you're not listening. And then we end with praise, right where we started. Just praise God for who he is. He is greatly to be praised and he's worthy of it. So that's it. So there's my challenge to you. Just take an hour and I would actually challenge you, do it today. Like don't wait for next week. Don't wait for Saturday. Don't wait for Sunday before church. Don't wait. Do it today. Push pause on your life for an hour and go hard after God. With everything you have, just go after him for an hour. Put everything else aside and go after God hard for an hour today, right now. If you can't, because I get it, maybe you got things to do. Not as many of you have many things to do as we like to admit. I'm, the, I'm guilty of that, right? Then do it tomorrow. If you have to wake up an hour early, do that. If you've got to do it during your lunch break, do that. Whatever it is, be so steadfastly committed to turning your eyes on the one who sees you. That you're willing to sacrifice things to go after him. You will not regret it. So take the challenge. Pray for an hour. Use this tool. Use another tool. But do it. Turn your eyes to the one who sees. And see him. It's just a thought.